One of the highest barriers to good audio is learning about audio interfaces. In 2012, I was too intimidated to get them, so we got a USB mic instead. But it's 2024, and audio interfaces have gone from looking like this to this. This is the Mayono Caster C2 Neo streaming mixer. And although it's called a mixer, it converts an analog signal into a digital signal. So yes, it's still considered an interface. The difference is these types of interfaces specialize in recording, whereas these types specialize in live applications such as streaming. Question is, does this mixer really excel in live applications or are its features just gimmicks? There's only one way to find out. Let the unboxing begin. And by the way, Mayono did send me this mixer, but everything I say in this video are my thoughts only. All right, let's unbox this thing. Let's open this up. Okay. Oh, this is new. Comes with quick tips. It's got fast instructions on how to connect the mixer to your iPhone and iPad and to your computer. 60 days replacement, 365 day warranty service, lifetime tech support. Mayono was really leveling up here. In the actual manual, Smells good. It's like a fresh paint. And for the mixer. Huh. I think I did request the white version. This is the white version. It does say that on the box, color white. So you got your aux cable right here, and you got a USB-C to USB-A connector to connect this with your computer. And of course, the mixer itself. Oh, that's a little heavier than I expected. See how that weighs. The mixer weighs... 358 grams. Quick note about the build quality. The knobs are nice and smooth. They don't wiggle. There's a little bit of budging there, but it's very firm overall. The faders also have some resistance to them, so it actually feels well built for the price. Just comparing it to another budget audio interface, the Behringer UM2, both do have a plastic chassis. This is how the Behringer sounds. Very hollow, whereas the Mayono, very solid. You really get a sense that it's filled with a lot of parts inside. Okay, let's go through the features really quickly. This here is your power button. I'm glad they have one. This port is for charging only. Yes, the mixer has a battery. You can see that right here, and it has an eight hour battery life. So when you see this filling up motion and this red light indicator, then it is charging. Take that out. When it blinks with one light, it is down to 25%. When you see two of these lights, it's at 50%, three lights, 75%, and four lights 100%. And this port is for connecting the mixer to your computer or your phone. You can use them simultaneously. This is the stream out jack for sending your audio from the mixer to your phone when you are streaming. This is your headphones jack. And you have your aux port for taking in music from an external source and adding that to your audio. And of course we have the XLR port for your microphone. Okay, let's set this up. So take this cable with a USB-C and USB-A, connect the USB-C part to this port over here. And this goes into your computer, or in my case, a USB dock. Now that it's plugged in, we press the power switch and it lights up like that. And by the way, a power switch is very nice to have as not all interfaces have that. Okay, once it's plugged in, go to your audio workstation's preferences and simply select Mayono Caster C2 Neo. It's completely plug and play. Then hit apply. All right, let's test this mixer. So once you've connected your XLR microphone, this is the Mayono PD200X. You wanna find that perfect balance between the mic gain knob and the mic volume knob. Right now you're hearing me with the gain cranked all the way up to the right, and the volume fader is about somewhere halfway in the middle. And here you have your gain meter, you're gonna see if you are clipping or not. You'll also wanna make sure this out knob is set pretty high. So as you can hear, if I drag this down, the volume is gonna... Now it is gradually returning right there. You can consider this like your final volume. Now with this particular configuration, you might find that the sound is a bit in your face. And in my testing, if I set the gain somewhere around here and raise the fader somewhere around here, the frequencies sound a bit 
silkier. So it's really up to you to find which you think suits your taste best. All right, now this is the 48 volts phantom power button, and this is used to power condenser microphones. The Mayono PD200X is a dynamic, and right now I'm using the Boya BY M1000 Pro condenser microphone. And this is how it would sound on the Mayono Caster C2 Neo. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And I have switched back to the Mayono PD200X. Now this is the Bluetooth button, which is for connecting the Mayono Caster to your phone so that you can play background music and effects with your phone and send that into your stream. So here's how that would look. Grab your phone, long press the Bluetooth button. Then you're gonna find the Mayono Caster C2 Neo, so like that. Bluetooth connected. And it connects. So now that we've got our phone connected to the Mayono Caster, we just pick a song, say this one, and we gradually crank up the aux knob. Can drag that down. Can keep boosting it. Really love how handy this feature is. Now the next button is for reverb presets. Let's press this. This is the karaoke reverb setting. How does this sound? Do I sound like I'm ready to sing? This one is the church reverb setting. Hallelujah, how does that sound? Wow. This is the hall reverb setting, so if I want to do, say, a motivational speech maybe in a hall, this is how that might sound. This is the valley reverb setting, and whoa. I had no idea that valleys had this much reverb. Now this is the room reverb setting, which makes it sound like you're in an untreated room. Considering how treated this room is, I think it's doing a pretty good job. And we are back to the original setting. Now the next button is a game changer. This is the sidechain button. Let me show you what it does. So I'm playing a song, but notice how the volume of the music goes lower as I speak. Kind of like a radio show. And becomes louder when I stop speaking. And we can actually take this to the next level by using music only sidechain. Check this out. So with music only sidechain, using that same track, it gets rid of the vocals. Not completely. It does a pretty good job with some songs, some songs not so much. Yeah, I think it's doing a pretty good job with this song. And of course, you can continue to control the aux knob from here in case you don't want the music to be that loud. And by the way, if you want to prevent copyright strikes and getting your streams censored, check out Audio. Audio is a growing music and sound effects library that I use for most of my creative work, including YouTube videos, voiceover demo reels, and client videos. Get 70% off your first year of Audio Pro by using my referral link in the description below. Now you might have noticed that the direct monitor button was on this whole time, and it's called direct monitor because it allows you to monitor your voice directly through your headphones. So I'm hearing myself right now. I do have to say there's a tiny bit of lag, so I wouldn't call it zero latency monitoring, but it isn't too distracting. I think I can get by with this. Now, the second thing that this button does is called loopback. So you long press the direct monitor button, and when you hear loopback on and it turns purple, Don't want so many gold, yeah. hear that? Don't know how to feel. Notice how I wasn't using my phone for that. I was using my computer. So remember right now we are recording into my computer. It's called loopback because the audio from the computer goes into the mixer and loops back into the computer as a recorded sound. That means if you have loopback on and say you're watching a YouTube video or playing Spotify, the audio that you hear there will go into your recording or stream. Take note that if I single press this, Monitoring is off, but loopback is still on. If I wanted to get rid of loopback, I would long press the direct monitor button again. 
and now loopback is off. Let's go to the pitch presets. This is the default pitch, so nothing happens. This is my female voice. Th I guess this is how I would sound if I were a female. Now this is my male voice. It does kind of sound like me, only with a deeper voice. And this is my baby voice, I guess. <laughs> it's how I would sound decades ago. And this is my robot voice. Wow, what kind of a robot sounds like this? And we are back to the default voice. Now this is one of my favorite features here, the noise reducer button. Let's turn it on for low noise reduction. So this is noise cancellation set to low. What it's doing is that it's hunting for sounds to squish, but there's not a lot of noise. Let me introduce some noise. So here I got a dog sound effect. Let's see if that helps. It's kind of playing. It's playing right now. You let me know if it's actually making it through. There's, there's a dog sound effect that I'm playing on loop. Okay, now noise cancellation is set to high and I can really hear my voice being cut out. Let's play that dog sound effect again. And uh, let's see how that impacts the overall sound. I'm playing it right now. How does this sound? Huh, let's see. Okay, to give you a better sense of how effective the noise reduction actually is, I've switched over to a condenser mic, and now we have my AC set to jet mode, which is the loudest it can get. So right now we don't have any noise canceling at all. Let's switch it to low. Okay, so now I'm speaking with low noise cancellation. How does this sound? Okay, I'm talking, talking, talking. How does this sound? Let's set it too high. I'm talking, talking, talking. How does this sound? Can you hear it? Okay, now we're back on the Mayono PD200X. Now let me show you what you can do with a sound pad. I've pre-installed a couple of royalty-free sounds. Let's press this one. There's a quick swish. Let's play this one. Very Michael Bay. So let me show you how I added those sounds. If a button doesn't have anything recorded on it yet... Oh wait, yeah. <laughs> it did record something there. So first we have to clear the button by long pressing it. When you see it blinking like that, it is deleting the file. Now you can single press it, and it will blink slowly like that, and you can talk over it, and your voice will be recorded. And just tap on it when you are done. Press it. And it will blink slowly like that, and you can talk over it, and your voice will be recorded. And just tap on it when you are done. Okay, so I erased it again. What I can do now is while I have Bluetooth connected, I press the now empty button and then I play one of these files. So that's the dog. So to add a sound effect, I press the now cleared button. And now we have the dog bark sound effect. Just make sure not to talk over it while you're recording that sound. Okay, let's see if we recorded the dog. So there was a bit of delay there because it took a while for the file to play, so the delay was recorded as well. And that's how you use a sound pad. Let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro 1, the Mayono Caster C2 Neo is a versatile mixer. For the price, I don't think I've encountered any other studio device with this many useful features. And I have to highlight useful because sometimes features are added just for the sake of it. Sidechain, music only sidechain, loopback, those tend to be high-end features and you can access them at this price point. Pro 2, the Mayono Caster C2 Neo has effective noise cancellation. Sure, it had trouble with the dog barking sound effect, but it completely cleaned up the AC 
noise even on a low setting. Just having that feature gives you a little more peace of mind, especially if you have little to no soundproof. Three, the Mayono Caster C2 Neo is designed with portability in mind. It could fit into a bag, has an eight hour battery life, Bluetooth connectivity, and a plethora of ports. That makes it a portable live streaming studio. And for the cons, make sure to stay for the last one because it might be a deal breaker. Con one, the Mayono Caster C2 Neo does not connect to the Mayono Link software yet. And I say yet because Mayono, I do hope you give the C2 Neo its own set of Mayono Link software control. This is a con because other Mayono mics like the Mayono PD200X and the 400X can connect to the Mayono Link software. And with it, you can add EQ, compression, and limiting to get a closer to final broadcast sound. You might have a rich feature set on the hardware, but without the fully processed vocals, the show sounds kind of lackluster. Con 2, the Mayono Caster C2 Neo does not have zero latency monitoring. With just the default settings, there's already a bit of the delay with the monitoring right now. You can get used to it over time, and I don't find myself stuttering. But once you turn on the pitch presets, that delay is noticeably longer. If you activate reverb, there might be a bit more of a delay, but it's still tolerable. Con 3, the Mayono Caster C2 Neo is 16-bit only. Considering Mayono's USB mics as of late come with 24-bit conversion, even at the lowest price point, I'm surprised that a device that might be perceived as an upgrade to the mics has a lower bit depth. Perhaps a con of cramming in all these features at this price point. Which brings us to con number 4, and... This is a big one. The Mayono Caster C2 Neo has erratic preamps. At a certain amount of loudness, you might hear static. And sure, it's possible that it could just be my unit, but after checking other reviews, I was hearing that same static sound and they just weren't pointing it out. I was shocked when I heard it because Mayono's USB mics have fairly clean preamps. Like these USB mics might have a hissing sound like a but it's just like a flat line over time. With the Mayono Caster C2 Neo, the noise can be a little erratic and jarring. Let me show you what I mean. This is how it sounds when I boost it. Now, in my testing, I find that this happens when the combined loudness isn't loud enough. It's not a matter of having the gain knob turned up all the way or the fader turned up all the way. It's that whichever configuration of the fader and the gain knob that you use, if you don't reach a certain loudness, then that static becomes erratic and distracting. So here's the solution in my testing. You are better off using a louder gain and fader combination. So you see my gain is turned almost all the way up and so is my fader. And the preamp noise is louder, but at least it's even. Let me show you what happens when I lower the gain. There you go, there, there's that erratic sound. Very distorted. Brought the gain back up. I bring the fader down. And again, you have that erratic sound. So the key here really is just to use noise cancellation. Like so. Now, since the sweet spot is fairly loud and you're very likely to clip, you'll want to back off the mic a little bit. This way, you are less likely to clip your audio. So, do I recommend the Mayono Caster C2 Neo? I can for new streamers who are on a budget. Or pro streamers who just need something portable in their kit. I mention new streamers because the audio quality could miss the mark for professional shows. For recording applications primarily, the C2 Neo would not be my first recommendation, as the Mayono PD2 200X and 400X sound even better on their own without connecting to the mixer. Now, if streaming is your priority and you just want to do some casual recording on the side, then this might be for you. Overall, in spite of its shortcomings, I think the Mayono Caster C2 Neo is an innovative, feature-rich streaming mixer that targets its intended market well. If you want to grab the Mayono Caster C2 Neo, check out the link in the description down below. See you in the next video.